Welcome back to On the Road with Buckmasters. I'm your host, Rhett Holland, and today's episode, we are headed down to Lowndes County, Alabama, uh, right there in the heart of the Black Belt region of the state. And we are meeting up with Mr. Thomas Harris, the founder of Alabama Black Belt Adventures. We're gonna talk a little bit about the piece of property that we're on, which is his personal gusto plantation. We're gonna talk, talk about the management practices that he used to get his place in the shape it is now and uh you know how others can can do that as well we're going to do some bird hunting with mr ellis terry he's a board member of the alabama black belt adventures we're going to be hunting with the merritt boys as well from Lowndes county they're also known as the Lowndes county assassins they do a bunch of predator control for various property owners there in Lowndes county and uh we're also going to get to catch up with miss pam swanner she's the director of alabama black belt adventures and she's going to talk about the different economic, social impacts that that you know the Black Belt region brings to the state, and also the different opportunities that the Alabama Black Belt Adventures program can offer. They promote lodges, outfitters, the culture, and the history of the Alabama Black Belt region. So it's a really great program for the state. You're going to get to learn all about it today. Y'all stay tuned. This piece of property is absolutely gorgeous. You don't want to miss it. How you doing? I'm good. Thomas Harris. Red Holland. Like, yeah, like good. Red Butler. Sir. Well, it's good to have you in the Black Belt. Yes, yeah. sir. I've been blessed to be able to hunt a couple places Isn't in the good? Black Belt. When, when I used to come out here, when I was your age, there were quail everywhere you went in Lowndes County. Really? You didn't need a dog. You just need to start walking. Right. Yeah. And they had a lot of sword beans right. and a lot of corn. Right. Which we don't have much of that down here anymore. But right. That really helped. Now it's a lot of pasture land. That's what I was going to ask. So, um, when the cropland kind of went away, is it is it from the pines and? Well, now um, people farming cows. Yes, yeah, it's, it's mostly uh, cattle out here. But you can convert cattle property into a wildlife sanctuary. Right. It takes a little bit of time. It took us several years to do all of this, but um, it's worth it. Oh and no it's doubt. It's fun. It's fun to convert it. Right. Uh, you got to get rid of the invasive grasses, right. which are Bermuda and fescue and bahia. Right. Those are the, that's for the cows. So when you do that, you unlock the natural seed, the warm na native grasses that are in the bed. Right. They've just been choked out. Right. And that's what you'll see out here now. That was a cow pasture. Okay. And so we cleaned it all up, and you see the, the broom sage and all the native grasses pop up. Right. And that's what you'll see today. Right. But it didn't look anything like that when we first came. I don't doubt it. Yeah. How long has this taken? Uh, a dozen years. That's what I yeah, figured. We had eight different pieces of property. Okay. They were all different, and so we had to, and it came over stages, so we couldn't do what we're going to do right. uh, over there. And Alabama Wildlife's gonna use it uh, to help their members right. as they look at how to redo land into wildlife. To promote so, it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Cool. Every year we burn, and the hardwoods eventually will get affected by them. And what you need is sunlight to open up that seed bed. For the grasses. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So we've been planting long leaves all over the property as we find spots that, right. uh, that'll be good for it. You'll see right here. This gives a, about a two or three year jump on just being that time. Yeah, being being in a container and um, opposed to planting seedlings. Yes, that's right. That's right. So I'm interested in getting things done as quickly as possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. When I first got here, I didn't know anything about soil or forestry or anything. So it's all been a real steep learning curve. Right. Which has just been fabulous for the whole family. Right. It's, uh, it's definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. It comes with labor of love pretty quickly, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's good to have you here. Thank you for having us. Y'all must be the predator hunters. Yeah. yeah. I've us. heard about y'all. We do a whole lot of hog hunting. Just pretty much any predator that's a problem, we'll go over there and exterminate, take care of it. You know, a whole lot of mouth calling, you know, doing some stalk hunting too here and there for hogs and all kinds of stuff. Just taking out whatever's there. So Anything that will... Uh, 
affect the deer and everything like that, like the coyotes and stuff, and just take them out. Yeah. I like mouth calling because it's challenging, but, you know, a lot of people go out there with electronics, but I like doing mouth calls. Right, so. right. But yeah. It's also, you got to learn how to mouth call. I was about to say, it takes a little more skill using using mouth call. Especially with a diaphragm. Right. The diaphragm calls are pretty difficult, actually. No doubt. I mean, shoot, same way with turkey hunting. Most, yeah. most folks don't use a diaphragm because of that. And I've just started bow hunting, actually. I got a V3 Matthews. Heck yeah. I've been, um, it's fun. It's challenging. It's not like going out there with a rifle, you know, and shooting them, but. He's got the right bow. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it, dude. Heck I've shot yeah. tons of stuff with my bow now. Yeah, this is my first year shooting a Matthews. And what are you dude, shooting I, at now? I've got a verdict. So a verdict? Yeah. I love the verdicts. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really like it. Well, I've been a quail hunter all my life, and a lot of it was out here in Lowndes County, which was tremendous uh, population of birds as I was growing up. They were everywhere. But obviously, the quail population in this country has shrunk a great deal. But we wanted to bring back kind of like it used to be. So we put a lot of effort into best practices, working with Alabama Wildlife Federation and their wildlife biologists. They've been instrumental in, in helping us. And our manager, J.W. Collier, had a lot of experience. So today, what we try to do is create that wild bird looking covey that used to get up and just explode. I have had the privilege to recently serve on the board of the Alabama Black Belt Adventures and Mr. Thomas is, you know, it's about a 12 year old group he's, that he's established and has done such a great job of promoting outdoor recreation and promoting the Black Belt as a tourism destination. When that big covey gets up like that, I mean, trying to select that one, you know. You can't just shoot at a group. You can't you shoot miss. the group. You gotta, you're, you gotta trying to, you're trying to pick that one. It's, uh, that was fun. Black Belt Adventures uh, is a young organization with the mission of branding the Black Belt region, you know, an outdoor destination. The South Central region that we represent in, in Alabama gets its name from the dark, rich soil that's here in the Black Belt. Our history and our folklore is as rich as that black soil that supports the wildlife. Our seasons are long, our bag limits are generous, and you know, we attract hunters and anglers from all over the southeast and even northern states. And more than 50 outfitters call the Black Belt home. A testament to the fact that our outdoor recreation is a huge economic development tool. It supports more than 25,000 uh, jobs in our region. The economic impact of just hunting and fishing in these 23 counties that we work in is $1.1 billion. We've got our many rivers and lakes and streams that are, you know, great fisheries. We've got those opportunities and those backwaters of the rivers for canoe and kayaking trips. Our state parks, you know, are, are great opportunities for camping and hiking. And we are a true destination for outdoor adventures. So there's just an abundance of rich history here, lots of activities, real interesting back road trips, and we invite everybody to pull off that interstate and take in some adventures in the Black Belt. So if you're out to score a trophy buck or outwit a Black Belt gobbler or uh, engage in battle with a lunker bass, then we invite you to take the back roads of Alabama's Black Belt region. Mother Nature really shows out big here, and so we invite you to grab your gear and head to Alabama's Black Belt region for a great adventure. One straight ahead, one to the right. I think that one's got this. Look at here, both of them are bob white. The male bird. Looking good. I got a swing, because I was a swing and a miss. This 
place is unreal and I've never seen birds work like this before. I mean, big cubbies of what, 30, 20, 30? We've run into three or four of those. Let's get after some more. Shooting blanks. <laughs> the Alabama Black Belt Adventures came as an idea to let's look at the assets that are in the Black Belt. We've got all kind of fishing and hunting here, and it's 12 months a year. It's a rural economic development victory, and it's one that uh, we're real proud of. Well, Mr. Thomas, thank you for having yeah, us out. Pleasure have you. you have an absolute gorgeous place here, and uh, it is, it's amazing to see what hard work does. I mean, it, it, this place is immaculate. Yeah, well, immaculate. it has a lot to do with Mother Nature, and we try to use the best practices, and if you do that, then you wait on Mother Nature to do her magic, it works out. That's and right. We had a beautiful day. That's right. Beautiful day, the birds just, I mean, that's exciting. That's, mm -hmm. There's nothing like yeah. that, those kind of coveys getting up and, and just flying so hard. Um, it, it, it was such a blast. It's amazing the dynamics between a bird dog and a covey. One of them frozen, the other one frozen, who's going to flinch first, <laughs> and then boom. Exactly. It may be the greatest moment in sports. And that covey bowls up. It's just fabulous. Poetic Boy. chaos yeah. right there. Yeah. And it's just uh, it's just an uh, exclamation point on, you know, just watching the dogs I mean, yeah. and the fellowship, like you yeah. said earlier, it's just yeah. it, it's the biggest part of it and just enjoying the, this beautiful countryside. and. Um, this is such a, such a treat, yeah. so we really appreciate it. It's great. Oh, thank you for coming out. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I good so to be much. with you, Alice. Yes, sir. Enjoyed it. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, sir. It was man. a pleasure to yes, meet sir. you. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, you as Yes, well. sir. I, I, I had a great time sharing the woods with y'all. Yes, sir. We'll have to do it again sometime. Love to. Absolutely. All right, guys, we just uh, wrapped up a wonderful day here at Gusto Plantation with uh, Alabama Black Belt Adventures. Big shout out and thank you to Mr. Thomas Harris. Um, we got to ride around and do some shooting at some quail, shooting at, because I couldn't hit nothing. But um, man, what a pristine piece of property. It's just amazing to come and see what you know, hard work and management can really do to a piece of property here in the Black Belt. So uh, this is a prime example of, of what, you know, this, this region of the state can produce. But thank you again, and hopefully we can come back because this was, this was beautiful and, and a lot of fun. So y'all uh, check them out on Alabama Black Belt Adventures and, you know, book your next time.